I'm Wayne with ModularHydro.com. In this video, we're going to explain how to install a mini automatic shutoff float valve. You would use this in a reservoir or in a tank. When the water level rises, it's going to hit the float. That's going to travel up about three quarters of an inch and it's going to shut the water off coming into your reservoir or tank. Now, if you go to ModularHydro.com, you can not only purchase these, but we also have detailed instructions on how to install this valve. If you take this valve apart, there's going to be what we call a plastic gripper inside and a sleeve inside. Just in case this falls out on you while you're installing it, you want to make sure you put them back in properly, and we're going to show you how to do that. Let's take a look at the compression fitting parts in detail so that you understand. Also, uh, your diagram is going to show you breakdown where these parts go and how to put them back together if you do take them apart. You have what we call the actual nut itself. This is the bulk of the compression valve. Then you have what we call a plastic gripper. And as you can see, the plastic gripper tapers inward. You want the inward side to go towards where your hose is going to plug in. So we're going to put that in first, just like that, and look at your diagram because it'll show you where it goes. Now once that's nestled in there, we want to take what we call our sleeve. Now the sleeve, you want to make sure that the sleeve goes in to where these little tiny nibs go in first. So again, look at your diagram and that shows you how to do that. So you just pressure fit that in there. Now once that is in there, that's all you need to do. You don't have to stick your line in now. You can go ahead and install your float valve. Now that we have our compression nut assembled with the appropriate parts inside, remember the plastic gripper and the sleeve are now back inside. The actual mounting bracket to the float, you're going to have a washer that goes on first. Then this is going to be installed onto your reservoir or the tank that you're going to fill with water. Then you're going to use this small nut and you're going to screw that in and secure this to the wall of your reservoir. Once this is secured to the wall of your reservoir, now you're ready to reinstall the compression nut. Just simply turn that on until you can feel where it touches those internal parts. At this point, you can simply take your line and plug it in. Now, one thing important you want to make sure that you do. This line is going to plug in from the front of this compression nut. It's going to go the whole way back and it's going to stop about here. So that's a good inch and a half that this line is going to go in. So we want to make sure that that goes in the whole way. If it doesn't, just simply loosen this up a little bit shove it in the whole way till it stops, then snug down your compression nut, good and tight, just finger tight for now. Once you fill your reservoir with cold water, you're going to want to re-tighten this nut because of the temperature change. You want to make sure that this thing doesn't pop out and this line doesn't pop out. And that's really all there is to it. Once this is installed, tighten it down good and tight. And at this point, your water level is going to come up and it's going to shut this valve off. Now let's go ahead and show you how to install this into your reservoir. The first thing you want to do is you want to drill a hole in your reservoir or wherever you're going to have your water go. Because your, mount, your valve is going to mount on the back side. So what I did was I already pre-drilled my hole. I started with a quarter inch bit as a pilot and then I followed up with a half inch bit. Now once I got that hole drilled, and now you can pick anywhere on your reservoir you want to install this. That's up to you. That's your choice. I just came down about maybe two inches from the top of the reservoir. And what I do is my valve, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove my fittings. Okay, we have our washer, which is on the back side. So what I'm going to do at this point is this washer, you want to make sure, is installed first. Okay, then you want to go ahead, mount your valve, then you're going to take this wing nut or this uh, hexagon nut and you're going to tighten that up nice and snug. 
hand tight is plenty on this. You do not really need to use pliers. If, if you do decide to use some pliers, just snug it up a little bit, but hand tight is fine. Now this is what it looks like on the inside. The valve is, the float is going to travel up and it's going to shut off the water from going in. Now the water on this valve, it's interesting because the water actually floods out of here, the bottom side. So when this travels up, it shuts the water off from coming in here, the water comes in here. Now at this point, we can take our compression fitting or our compression nut and we can go ahead and turn that onto the, the valve itself, just to where you can feel it hit those internal parts we talked about earlier. At this point, you're going to take your clean water line from your reverse osmosis or your water source and remember that's going to plug in a good inch and a half. And if it doesn't, you want to loosen that a little bit, shove it in until it stops. At this point, you want to finger tighten this real good. Go ahead and connect up to your reverse osmosis or your water source. And this is what it looks like on the inside. Allow the water to fill up to where it shuts off the valve here. And then you want to re-tighten this nut because of your temperature change. Some of these parts may have loosened a little bit because of the cold water they contracted. So snug it up again and you're good to go. Hey, for more informative videos such as this, go to modularhydro.com. You can also purchase this valve at modularhydro.com. Thank you for watching.